All right, welcome to this video today. We're going to be talking about enthalpies of reactions, and specifically, we're going to talk about Hess's law. Okay. So before we get to that, we're going to just define a couple of things. We'll talk about standard states. Okay, we're going to be using definition of standard states often um, in this class, right, throughout the the, the semester. Okay. So standard states right, refers to pressure being one bar, temperature can be whatever it is it's specified, okay? Right, concentrations of things are one molar, okay? Liquids and solids are in their pure state, okay? <clears throat> and then elements, right, are in their most, most stable form at a given temperature, right, that's specified and one bar, right? So for chlorine, it would be Cl2 gas, right, at say room temperature, pressure conditions, okay, right, and so that, that's just our definition of standard states, okay, so when you talk about something in a standard state, that's what we're referring to, okay, and so when we talk about standard enthalpy changes, okay, that means that these, we're talking about chemical reactions occurring under standard states, okay, um, standard conditions, okay, at whatever temperature is being specified, okay, so for example, condensation reaction, right? Enthalpy, the standard enthalpy change for condensation reaction of N2, N2 gas going to N2 liquid, and that right <clears throat> pressure of that gas is one bar, right? And the liquid is a pure liquid, and the and under those conditions, the enthalpy change for that phase change, right, um, at 300 Kelvin, say minus 26.2 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Right, standard enthalpy changes are, are molar enthalpy changes. So, so often, you know, we're, we're not taking time to say our molar standard enthalpy change, okay? So, so um, just, just keep in mind when you're talking about standard enthalpy changes, these are per mole values, right? These are molar enthalpy changes, okay? We just often ignore saying molar just out of pure laziness, I guess. So just as a review, hopefully right, we've seen this before in other chemistry classes, right? Exothermic reaction, right? The enthalpy change of my chemical reaction is less than zero, right? Enthalpy of my reactants is higher than enthalpy of my products under at standard states. Endothermic reaction, right? Is um, energy is, is absorbed into my reaction, if you will, right? My reaction consumes some amount of energy, enthalpy, right? The enthalpy of my products is higher than that of my reactants, okay? And the change here is greater than zero. Okay, so Hess's law, right? Hess's law, right, <clears throat> is is just an application of enthalpy being a state function. Okay, so Hess's law works purely because enthalpy is a state function, right? And what Hess's law is, right, is it just says, right, if I know, right, the enthalpy change from state one to state two, then two to three, and then three to four. I can use those enthalpy changes to get the enthalpy change from one to four. And it's just a sum of one to two, two to three, three to four, equals the enthalpy change of one to four, okay? Because again, enthalpy is a state function, so if I go around that long path, right, the total enthalpy change there has to be the exact same as the enthalpy change if I just shortcut from one to four, okay? So again, this is, so Hess's law is just purely valid and there because enthalpy is a state function, right? It's literally just an application of enthalpy, enthalpy being a state function, okay? So how we use this, right? So we want to write our chemical reactions, right? If we want to find out the enthalpy of some new reaction from a set of other reactions, right? We want to write those other reactions in a way that when I add them all up, I get my final reaction, okay? When I modify the reaction, right, I have to modify the enthalpy values accordingly, right? And then we sum up the reactions, we just sum up the enthalpy, right? And if, and if we recall, right, from, from general chemistry, right, when we learn this stuff, right, if I take a reaction and I multiply it by a constant and multiply the enthalpy by that constant, if I take a reaction and flip it, then I change the sign of my enthalpy. Okay, so let's do an example here, right? We wanna combine <clears throat> these two reactions, okay, right, to get this final reaction up here, okay. My two reactions are N2 plus O2 going to 2NO, 
and 2NO plus O2 going to 2NO2. Now notice here that the 2NO cancel with each other, okay, right? And they don't appear, they're intermediate, right? And I'm left with my overall chemical reaction. So the enthalpy change for this reaction up here is just the sum of these two enthalpy changes, right? Which right, is that 68 kilojoules. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we'll talk about molar enthalpy changes or formation as another way of essentially using Hess's law. And these are things that you've seen often in general chemistry in the back of textbooks. You look up these enthalpy changes of formation, which again are molar values, but often we don't say the word molar, we'll just say standard enthalpy of formation, but it is implied to molar value to per mole quantity. <clears throat> okay. And so what is the enthalpy of formation reaction for a compound, right? It's when exactly one mole of a product is formed, just one product and one mole of that product is formed. So it has a stoichiometric coefficient of one in its balanced chemical reaction. Okay. All of the reactants are in their pure states at the standard conditions and the reaction is balanced. Okay, and that is how I create an enthalpy reaction. Okay, right, an example of this would be here, right, where H2O is my one product. My stoichiometric coefficient here has to be one for H2O. And because of that, I didn't have half of O2 gas plus H2 gas, right? H2 gas and O2 gas are their standard states at, say, 298 Kelvin, right, one bar, right? And so this enthalpy change of this reaction is the enthalpy of formation of H2O, okay? So when is the enthalpy of formation equal to zero? Well, that's if I'm looking at the enthalpy of formation of a pure element in its standard state, right? I ask, right, what is the enthalpy of formation, right, of um, Cl2 gas, right? Well, it's zero because the enthalpy of formation reaction for Cl2 gas, right, would be just Cl2 going to Cl2, right? There's no reaction, right? Um, right, both of these are in gas phase, right? This is what the enthalpy of formation reaction would look like for Cl2 gas, which is no net reaction. So there's no enthalpy change, right? So the enthalpy of formation of pure elements in their standard states is zero. Okay. <clears throat> now for ions in solution, okay, um, it, it, it's difficult to define what the enthalpy formation is, and so we use a reference, right? And this this has to do with the fact that right, there's no absolute enthalpy for something, right? That's why we have to use these enthalpy formation reactions to kind of define the enthalpy of a of a molecule, right? And in solution, I define the enthalpy formation of H plus ion to be zero. And so all other enthalpy formations in solution are defined in reference to that being zero, okay? And this is more relevant when talking about electrochemistry, okay? Um, and, and that type of stuff, which we'll get to later in the semester, okay? And so finally, using Hess's law and these enthalpy formations, right, we have this um, <clears throat> way where we can calculate the enthalpy change for a reaction as the sum of the enthalpy of formations of our products times their stoichiometric coefficients minus the sum of the enthalpy formations of our reactants times their stoichiometric coefficients, okay? <clears throat> right, and again, these VIs are the stoichiometric coefficients in our balanced overall chemical reaction that we're interested in. <clears throat> so for example, O2 plus 2CO going to 2CO2, right? Would the overall enthalpy change be the enthalpy formation of CO2 times 2, because the stoichiometric coefficient is 2, minus the enthalpy of formation of O2 minus 2 times the enthalpy formation of CO. Okay. So that's it here for talking about Hess's law and application of that and enthalpy formation reactions. In the next video, we'll talk about the temperature dependence of enthalpy of reactions.